It's the time you've all been waiting for, guys. It's our latest Q&A with the Honest Watch dealer. What's your advice for first Rolex that I can wear for a year or two and sell on without losing a huge amount? Won't be worn daily, so imagine condition when selling. As long as no disasters, should be excellent. With 10 case budget and leaning towards a date just jubilee fluted, what are your thoughts? So yeah, really good model, thanks for the question. Date just 41, fluted, jubilee, the best combination. Cover this in so many videos. Dial-wise, blue, grey, rhodium, motifs, Wimbledon, absolutely fine. Around about the 10K, you're not gonna get a lot for your money. I'd also recommend a Submariner, a Subdate or Non-Date. Maybe go for the 40 mil discontinued. They're really safe bets. I mean, if you buy this watch here, the Date Just, you're absolutely fine, as long as you get the right dial combination. Over time, it will obviously go up in price. We have the price increases every year, five to 10%, so yeah. Buy it, wear it, enjoy it. You're not gonna lose a lot of money as long as you choose the right dial. But if you can, try and find yourself a nice Submariner. The ceramic, one of the early ceramics, anything from sort of 2009, 10 up to 2019, 20. That's where I'd be. So for around 10K, that's where I'd be putting my money. Hi Charlie, how can we verify the dial is original without the white tag? So there's a couple of things with this. I don't know if you guys are aware, the Roll Rolex watches come with a white swing tag. On the white tag, we'll have the model number and also the serial number and also the dial code. It's really important with really collectible and really sought after hyped watches that you get the white tag with that. For example, we've just sold a yellow gold green dial Rolex Daytona, AKA the John Mayer. The dial code for that one is 0013. It's really important that you make sure you have that with that watch for your investment because that is a collectible investable watch. Because if not, there could be the gray area that this particular watch has had a dial swap at some point. St. James in London is the service center for all Rolex watches in this country. You can actually phone up St. James's, although they probably won't tell you over the phone because they're not that helpful if you do ring them. Or book in a collection, you know, arrange to have it serviced with them or certainly inquire with them or take it down there, take it down to London, take it down, leave it with them. They'll, they'll qual qualify whether the watch actually had that dial in when it was made brand new. So definitely worth doing, definitely choose the right dealer. And if you're unsure, go to Rolex. Most versatile Rolex you could wear with shorts, with a suit, jeans and a t-shirt, Submariner, end of, full stop, done and dusted, covered it a hundred times in videos, the best all round, date, non-date, stainless steel, every situation, brilliant. Do your tattoos have any interesting stories do you have a Rolex tat? Well, I can answer that. I don't have a Rolex tat. I am possibly thinking of getting an extra tattoo, the Honest Watch deal at some point. I do think it's been uh, such a moment in my life that I do think I want definitely want to get that at some point. All my tattoos, I've been having them for a long, long time. I think relate back to looking back now, because not being tattooed in a few years, to moments in your life where they're actually milestones and you're actually cementing that. It's also, I think, a form of grieving possibly for certain things. You know, my first tattoo is for my father, my late father, and then the rest of them, I've looked back, I've got some really cool tattoos, I've got some for my family, I've got some for my father, I've got some for my daughters, and yet for me, everything I've had, when I've looked back now, at some point in my life, I've had them for a reason, and they're there to actually commemorate a certain time in my life, so yeah, they do actually have meaning, they're not just for a show of vanity, they actually do mean something to me, and yeah, I appreciate the question. I wouldn't get a Rolex tattoo, no. I, I certainly, not, not because, I think the honest watch because that's personal to me. I think if I got a Rolex tattoo, it's just not me. It's just not me, I'd rather wear the watch. In your opinion, what do you think is the worst Rolex money can buy? Are there any models you would refuse to purchase altogether? Thank you for your question. There's absolutely not one model I would refuse to buy. The problem with that question is, a lot of the sellers that would look to sell it, they'd actually refuse to sell at the price I would pay, which might just throw that back in your corner, but the, there's certain models that we don't sell, but I would still buy if the price was right, because I have other fellow colleagues in the in the watch industry that I could sell it to. So other dealers, I can certainly flip it onto them if I wanted to for a profit. So there's not one Rolex I actually wouldn't buy. In fact, we were actually offered a really unusual watch the other day. They had the Omar uh, on the dial, and I put out to a few few of the dealers on the sort of the Amiga and Tudor groups that I'm in, and they were all like jumping down for this watch. Then it came back with a price, uh, a little bit OTT. So, so yeah, 
it just goes to show there's nothing that I wouldn't buy, but the price has to be right. So yeah, if the price is right, I'm a buyer. Considering how you see so many different types of watches in your line of work, do you have a favorite watch? That is such a tough question. I think because I'm a typical dealer, I've got quite a few favorites. I have my own grail watches that I've always wanted to get and own, which I've been fortunate to do so. Then you're always looking for the, the next one, the next new one or grail. Honestly, I'd have to say the one I wear. I mean, for me to have this, you know, for like I think we're six, seven months in now, I absolutely love this watch. I honestly, and I never ever get bored of, of wearing it. I never get sick of wearing it. I absolutely love it. It gives me so much pleasure. And I've literally seen and owned and worn every watch you could possibly ever imagine. My absolute grail was a GMT Master 2 Yellow Gold, which has been discontinued. It's a factory set baguette, diamond, and sapphire bezel with diamond shoulders and a pave diamond set dial. There was a point when I could have bought that quite a few years ago for around 50K. I couldn't afford it then because I wanted to keep growing the business, so I couldn't justify having that much money outside the business. I can now afford that watch, but that watch is now 120 to 150K. So I'm never gonna pay that price. So for me, I have to say, it's the one on my wrist. How is the market for selling and buying worn and used Rolex watches? What is the impact on selling price if it has been worn? Better sell a watch unserviced or better sell it serviced to a dealer? So first and foremost, thanks for your question. A dealer will always prefer an unserviced watch on original condition, we certainly do. We would recommend wearing the watch because that's the way the market is. So definitely do not think you have to put them away. You can wear them and enjoy them. It does affect the value, not drastically. Two comparables, a Submariner unworn and a Submariner worn. Price-wise, over time, how much difference is there gonna be? Anywhere between 10 to 20% difference in, in RRP or what you can actually sell it for to a dealer or sell it off for us to sell it online. So definitely it does affect the price, but you've got to remember what are Rolex watches for? They're meant to be worn, they're meant to be enjoyed and you should be wearing them. This is from Michael Jackson's loafers. I really love this guy by the way. He does comment on a lot of the videos. Yo, check this. I got a question. In your opinion, you are investing a chunk of money into the watch world. Are you better having one high value watch or many lower value watches. For example, a single platinum Daytona or sub GMT Skydwell and a few other bits and bobs told them the same value. Shamone, Shamone. Absolutely love you messaging on the channel. I think you're a great guy uh, and a great sense of humor right up my street, by the way. So it's a really difficult one for me, this, because, you know, I have a few watches put away. Would I choose one watch over all those watches? Me personally, probably not. I like to have you know, a few more examples. So if it was either Platinum Daytona for me, one of the all time best, unbelievable watches. In fact, we've got one here. This came in last week from a client. I mean, that's pretty much every dealer's grail. Every viewer out there who's into the Daytona range, their grail. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable watch that. Would I prefer that to let's say my Pikachu, a Panda, so a Panda. What else could I add to that to make up the value? Could I add like a Pepsi? Yeah. So that's three there. You know, if I lined all those watches up there and compared it to this watch, which would I choose? As much as I love this watch, I would choose the other three because for me, it's an extremely heavy watch to wear. And you, unless you've ever felt the weight, you'll never understand how heavy they are. Would I wear it as a daily? No, because of the value and how special the watch is. So if it was me and buying long-term investment, I would have choose three or four watches. I'd have the pleasure out of them, rotate them, They'll still go up in value, and then at least you're not putting all your money just in one watch, which actually is unbelievable. Trade a white dial, Daytona 116500LN, for a Hulk and Pepsi, yes or no, and why? It depends whether you're trading for investment, are you trading to wear? For me personally, if I was trading for investment, I would definitely do pull the trigger on the Hulk and the Pepsi because they're two unbelievably soft watches, really, really are hyped watches and for a reason. And if I was buying to wear, I'd still do it. I'd still do the Hulk and Pepsi. I would still choose that. I love the Panda Dayton. I've got them myself personally. I think they're unbelievable watches, but when you can have two unbelievable watches instead of one, it'd be two. So yeah, Hulk, Pepsi, million percent yes. So thanks for sending in all your comments. We will be doing another one very soon. Watch this space.